Let's begin with the word of prayer. Our Father and our God which art in heaven. We thank you for the opportunity to worship tonight. We thank you for these blessed and sanctified hours. Lord, bless us to enter into your rest. Help us to understand and be enlightened on what your rest is. And help us to experience your rest in our hearts, in our minds, in our souls. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our theme all this week has been faith and a new life in Christ. Now, I want us to understand something in starting here. From the beginning of time, there has always been a battle and a controversy between the religion of God and the religion of others. That's the way it was with the entrance of sin into the universe. That was the problem with Lucifer in heaven, the father of lies. You see, Lucifer wanted to do things his way. He didn't want to do things God's way. He felt that his way would work better. And he felt that God should accept his way. When sin, when sin found entrance among mankind, that was the problem between the first two sons of Adam. Their names was Cain and Abel. God told mankind that he required a sacrifice for his sins. And at that time, God specified what the sacrifice should be. He asked for an animal sacrifice, a lamb. God was very clear on what the sacrifice should be. But Cain decided he was going to bring something other than what God asked for. He felt that it didn't make much difference. He decided to bring a sacrifice just like God had asked. Only he felt that he had the right to choose what sacrifice he wanted to bring. So 
So Cain brought a sacrifice to God. He bought the best first fruits of his crops. He brought a sacrifice. It was the best. But the problem was, it wasn't what God had asked him to bring. Therefore, it was not accepted by God. That anger came. And when he saw that his brother's sacrifice was accepted, because his brother sacrificed exactly what God asked him to do. And when he saw his brother's sacrifice was accepted, he became angry with his brother and he killed him. So the same problem exists in the world today. I need you to listen carefully to this. You see, there's a battle between the religion that God has commanded us and the religion that men have created. There's a controversy between the religions that demons have created and what God has established. There's a battle between what saith the Lord and what says tradition. There's a battle between what God has commanded and what the majority says and demands. And it's up to us to choose who we will obey. Are we going to obey men or God? Are we going to follow and obey demons or are we going to obey God? Are we going to follow and obey tradition or are we going to follow what God says? Are we going to do what the majority does or what my father did or what my mother did or are we going to do what God says? That's the battle that goes on in the world today. Now today is a special day. It's a sacred time. It's a time period that God has blessed. The world doesn't recognize it. Traditional religions have rejected it. And we have to choose who we're going to obey, who we're going to follow. Let's look to see where this whole thing of the Sabbath begun. Genesis chapter 
Let's look in Genesis chapter 2. Verses 1, 2, and 3. Ajikanchongonga now let me tell you what we learn from these texts of scripture. When we talk about the Sabbath, it's always wise and necessary for us to go back to creation. That's when the Sabbath started. That's when the Sabbath was instituted. And the Bible points out that it's not man's Sabbath, it's the Sabbath of God. It's a time period that he has blessed. Because he rested on that particular day. For seven days, God created something different on every day. On the seventh day, God created or instituted the Sabbath. If we can reach our hand up and move the sun out of the sky, then we can change the Sabbath. We cannot change anything that God did during creation week. Nor can we change his Sabbath. The Sabbath is not the Sabbath because you go to church that day. The Sabbath is the Sabbath because God created it to be that during creation week. So that's the foundation of the Sabbath. That's when it started. Let's look at Exodus chapter 20 verses 8 through 11. Uh, Exodus chapter twenty, verses eight Yo Linda, what you don't want to know once about 
Now let's remember that the seventh day Sabbath was instituted at creation. This law, which is the law of God, was given several thousand years later. The Sabbath had already been in existence since creation. Okay. It was a time period, a whole day that God made holy from creation. And God has a special blessing for his creatures when they honor his Sabbath day. So since this has been around since creation, God starts off this commandment with the word remember. You see, God sees the end at the beginning. God sees and knows the future. God saw that mankind was going to forget and set aside the Sabbath. Therefore, he starts off the commandment with the word remember. The one commandment that the whole world seems to have forgotten is the one commandment that God starts off with the word remember. And there's something else very important we need to point out here. The Bible says the seventh day is the Sabbath. Not the first day. Not Sunday. Not the sixth day of the week. God says the seventh day is the Sabbath. And he says the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. The seventh day Sabbath is the Lord's day. Not the first day of the week. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. That's what the Bible clearly says. It's a time period that God blessed. He sanctified it and hallowed it. It contains a special blessing for those who honor it in honor of God as the Creator. Let's look at Ezekiel chapter 20. Ezekiel chapter 20, verses 12 and then verse 20. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 12 and then verse 20. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 12 and then verse 20. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 12 and then verse 20. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 12 and then verse 20. 
周古天老，要一天老天的包一天古要老土话住，天要土话我找老的湖，给你搞到还地啊，天口错错，弄十八栋的古。个老个幼儿园，六级，正正的古铁楼，个老要包的古幼儿园户啊，老土不住。God says that He gave His creatures His Sabbath. 我那不来到的，我住的，我住到末，我住六十六个六级到末，就等于我住到几。To be a sign between him and them. And it's a sign that he is the creator of the universe, and he is the one who recreates you. God says it's a sign between him and his true people. So therefore, he says, "Hollow my Sabbath." It's not the Sabbath of some church. It's not the Sabbath of some man. It's the Sabbath of the Lord, who is your God. God asks you. And God commands you to hallow and keep sacred His Sabbath. And He says, if you do that, it's a sign between me and you that you're my child and that you worship me, the true Creator. Let's look at Exodus chapter thirty-one. Exodus chapter twenty-one, verses sixteen and seventeen. Thirty-one. Thirty-one. Verse sixteen and seventeen. The Lord told me, "I go share." Yes. I go down there. I go down there. The Lord told me, "This is the day. The Lord told me, 'One Sabbath, two Sabbaths, each day to do a thing.' The Lord said, 'I will do it all the time. The day, the day, the Lord is doing something good.'" ลาวเดกูเดลัยว่าจุดใดเดกูเทียบเพิ่งหายหนึ่งยี่สิบยี่ในตอนเดาเจ้านู้ว่าจุดเดาจีลุ่นดูลุ่นเตเทียนนู้
That's what the New Testament teaches us. And God says that his Sabbath is a perpetual or everlasting covenant between him and Israel forever. It is something that will last and must last throughout their generations. God says it's a covenant between him and his people, an agreement. God says it's a sign between me and my chosen people. And it's a sad reality when we look at so much of the world who claim to believe in God. Yet they refuse to obey the very thing that God says is a sign between him and his people. They claim to believe in the word of God. They read the scripture where God says, Remember my Sabbath day. They read the scripture where God established it at creation and said it's his Sabbath. They read the scripture where God says it's a sign between me and my chosen people. And they still refuse to keep it. But God says my people will honor me by honoring my Sabbath day. It's a time period that's blessed. It's a time period where we should receive a special blessing from the God of heaven. It's a time period where we should have special experiences with God. God says, come aside from all of your work. And have a deep, refreshing, recreating experience with me. That's what God says. You see, the Sabbath is a blessing. And during that time period, God has special blessings for each of us if we honor him by keeping it. It's a special time of worship. It's a special time of intercourse with the living God of heaven. I want to look at Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2, verse 27 and 28. Mark chapter 2, 27 and 28. Now this text reveals some very important things to us. The one who created 
the Sabbath is talking in these texts. And the creator of the Sabbath said that he created it as a special blessing for mankind. It's a special day, once a week, where man is to come aside and receive great and immense blessings from God within his soul. He is to find deep contentment and blessing and rest in God. It's a spiritual rest. And it strengthens us mightily, spiritually, if we recognize it as the Sabbath of the Lord. And Jesus says in these texts that he is the Lord of the Sabbath day. The Lord's day is the Sabbath day. No shonda yo what you know. The Lord's day is not Sunday. What you know to your new e Jesus says that the Sabbath is the Lord's day. What you upon the pole, what you thought yeah, what you know your no sha. He said that he is Lord of the Sabbath. He said that the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. It makes us wonder how the whole world has put aside God's Sabbath day rest. It reminds me of the two sons of Adam, Cain and Abel. There are many people in the religious world today who want to worship God, but they want to worship God their way. They want to sit and decide what's important and what's not important. God has given specific commandment about His Sabbath. God has made it very clear to us when his Sabbath is. And God has commanded us and requested us to honor and keep his Sabbath day holy. And in his commandment, he says, now, I want you to remember to always do this. And even with all of that, all of the world seems to have forgotten, and that's the commandment above all that they reject and ignore. God says this is the sign between me and my true people. Jesus says he is Lord of the Sabbath. Let's look at our next take text in Luke chapter 4. And verse 16. Luke chapter 4, 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 verse 16. 
Jesus, who was our example, kept the Sabbath when he walked this earth. He's the creator of the Sabbath, and when he was here, he set the example of keeping the Sabbath. The Bible said it was his custom, it was his Sabbath to worship in the house of God on the Sabbath day. All of these things are in the New Testament. So I want us to turn over to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 9, 10, and 11. Hebrew here again in the New Testament, it talks about the Sabbath. It's not just talking about the rest of grace. It's talking about the complete rest of the Sabbath day. The Bible says we should labor, we should strive to enter into God's rest. And God warns us against unbelief because that's in the heart of many when it comes to the Sabbath. And the Bible says there remains a rest to the people of God. God's seventh day Sabbath remains for the people of God. Those are the ones who genuinely experience the rest of grace. Because they honor the God who sanctifies them. They are in harmony with and they live according to the sign that is between them and the God who sanctifies them. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 66. Isaiah chapter 66 verses 22 and 23. Ningo 
我古月几难，有阿娘，有娘的古里家，我住到海南海边，过海宁，过家界，听老路，听高路边有娘领导，我住海边坐坐，路，听坐坐十八度。ท <Sanly> ี่หนึ่งจะชวนหนึ่งอยู่ตัวไปเหอะตัวกู The Sabbath is a part of creation. ฮะยานุชัยยาอีเป็นตัวเกิดจีนรุ่นตุลุเตนแต่ว่าจู่ The Sabbath is embraced in the plan of salvation. ฮะเกิดยานุชัยนอตัวมั่วเป็นจังเดอร์จะเกิดป้าก็ดีแต่ว่าจู่ The Bible says that the Sabbath will be kept. In the new heaven and in a new earth. The Apostle Paul said, "I tell you, the Jews who are Jews are not Jews, but they are Jews. They 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 are not Jews, but they are Jews. With that truth in the Bible, the whole world and most of the uh, major religious organizations have rejected God's Sabbath. But God lets us know it's a sign between me and my true people. And when he makes the heavens and the earth new, he said every Sabbath all are going to come before me and worship. Then what you do, dear? You tell me to do two and two Sabbath or ten and you do pay her go. Those who learn to honor God's Sabbath in this earth will be present in the earth made new. So then you want to come? What you do, sir? You see, the Bible says we cannot deliberately break one commandment and still enter the kingdom of God. Religious organizations claim. To keep the law of God. Yet the one commandment that God pleads with them to remember, they have rejected and forgotten. The Bible says, if you're guilty of breaking one. You're guilty of breaking all of them. And this is where Satan has deceived mankind. He assaults the Sabbath is not important. He said, "It doesn't matter what day you go to church on." He says, "That's not important." You should honor God every day. And by the time he's finished with us, he has deceived us into breaking God's commandment, the one that he pleads with you to remember. And all of the major religions of the world do not honor God's Sabbath. Even those 
organizations that say that they are Christian organizations do not remember and honor God's Sabbath. But we do not choose to do that. Let's read one last text. In Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah chapter 58. Verse 13 and 14. Okay, no Who God asked us to turn away our foot from trampling on and breaking his Sabbath. God pleased with us to take our foot off breaking his Sabbath. He said, if you will honor me, by keeping my Sabbath day whole. Not doing your own work and your own pleasure. Not even speaking your own words. He said, if you honor my Sabbath and keep it and call it a delight. He says, I'll bless you and cause you to rise and ride upon the high places of the earth. And he says, I'll give you the heritage of Jacob, which is eternal life and eternal things. Is the Sabbath important? Yes, it is. Yeah, you It's a sign that God is the Creator. Beyond It's a sign that points to the true God and the true Creator. It points to the one who alone has power to recreate you. And God says you honor him by honoring his Sabbath. We want to be sure right now that we fix in our heart that we're going to honor God's Sabbath. No matter what the rest of the world does. We serve and we honor and we obey God. Do what you want to keep it. 
We honor the sign between us and our Creator. So we want to close tonight with an appeal. Tomorrow will be a baptism. There's still opportunity tonight. For those who want to choose to become a part of the family of God to do that. And a part of choosing to be baptized on the morrow is a commitment to honor God's seventh day Sabbath. Who here tonight wants to stand in a commitment to be baptized on tomorrow and to do what God asked them to do. God is calling you to join his family, to join his people. God is calling on you to allow him to recreate you. You but your entire family. God wants to bless you. God wants to make you through creation his child. Who wants to make that choice tonight? God is moving upon hearts. Don't worry that everything is quiet. Just, just, just meditate and pray. God is moving upon hearts. Who will stand for the Lord and become a son and daughter of God? God wants you. He's longing for you to give yourself to him. So he can do for you what it is impossible for you to do for yourself. Who will accept the Lord tonight? Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we come before your throne of grace tonight, asking that you bless us to enter into your rest. Let us truly experience what the Sabbath is for. Bless us so that we experience the Sabbath rest. Now, Lord, continue your blessing and your mercy on each of us here tonight. Lord, we have recommitted ourselves to you. And those who are still trying to make up their mind, help them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Have mercy on them. And give them a special outpouring of your spirit. 
These blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, Amen. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, Tony.